In The Bold and the Beautiful, Steffi doubts Deacon's claims about Sheila's survival, while Deacon persists in his hunt for her. As Deacon and Finn investigate, Steffi grows anxious, potentially resorting to sabotage. Meanwhile, Hope and Steffi navigate family dynamics amidst the turmoil. Deacon's revelations shake Finn's beliefs, altering the course of their search. Spoilers for The Bold and the Beautiful, Steffi undermines is Sheila Hunt attempting to distract Finn and Deacon off their path? According to teasers for The Bold and the Beautiful, Steffi Forrester is relieved to be free of Sheila Carter at last. She doesn't believe Deacon Sharp when he says he just wants to move on from Sheila. Deacon, though, has been accumulating more and more evidence to support his theory that Janet Weber, aka Sugar, was the real victim. Steffi's level of unease will increase as Deacon gets closer to establishing Sheila's existence and bringing her home. To what extent would Steffi go to prevent her worst adversary from reappearing? Could Steffi try to divert Deacon and John Finn Finnegan from the Sheila hunt in an attempt to undermine it? It's not difficult to picture a situation in which Steffi answers a call that is intended for Finn or something similar. It's possible that Steffi will learn of information that could reveal Sheila's location and choose to keep it to herself rather than disclosing it. If Sheila is really being held captive somewhere, as so many fans have come to suspect, Steffi might even follow the hints and locate Sheila on her own. If Steffi assumed control of Sheila's captorship and remained silent for a while, it would be intriguing. It's crucial to keep in mind that Sheila has the power to persuade Steffi to do some fairly outrageous things in the name of defending her family. However, if BNB authors don't want Steffi to go too far, it might not go that far. Maybe Steffi can just erase a crucial email or voicemail in an attempt to keep Finn and Deacon from making the connection. Whatever the situation, once Steffi learns about Deacon and Finn's forthcoming scheme to save Sheila, she will undoubtedly get nervous about their collaborative investigative work. If given the chance, it's not difficult to imagine Steffi undermining Finn and Deacon's efforts. We'll give you additional predictions about any nefarious schemes Sheila might carry out because Steffi will pretty much do anything to prevent her from returning into any of their lives. Steffi and Finn's marriage might have a lot of problems if she somehow manages to ruin the Sheila search. According to spoilers for The Bold and the Beautiful, Steffi might need to make a big decision as this plot thickens. Keep an eye out for all the exciting developments that are approaching. Make CDL your go-to BNB destination since we'll have tons more amazing spoilers, news, and updates for you regarding Bold and the Beautiful. Deacon tries to persuade a furious Finn that Sheila is still alive, while Hope and Steffi revisit a sensitive topic. Wednesday, April 24, 2024, Hope and Steffi talk about Thomas, RJ and Luna declare their love, and Finn and Deacon get into a heated argument on the Bold and the Beautiful today. Editors have independently selected all of the goods and services that are listed. On the other hand, Soaps.com might get paid a commission for orders made through its retail links, and the retailer might get some data that can be audited for bookkeeping purposes. Deacon is amazed to learn that Sugar was freed from prison two months ago at I.L. Giardino. She must have been the one on the crematorium slab because Sheila was not there. You can't make this stuff up, he murmurs, it's amazing. Should Sugar have been incinerated, Sheila, where are you? When there's a knock at the door at the cliff house, Steffi is kissing Finn, goodbye, as he gets ready for work. Hope enters as Steffi yells, it's open, and asks, it's open? That's a pleasant surprise, then. Yeah, no guards, chuckles Steffi. They can now breathe again because Sheila is no longer among them. Hope offers her father's sincere apologies for the absurd remarks he has been making about Sheila. Hope is astonished to learn that Sheila is still alive and is following Deacon throughout the town. They've endured enough pain already. In particular, you, Steffi. Finn believes Deacon is lying. To give himself some optimism that Sheila is still alive, he told himself he saw ten toes on her. There is no other explanation. Zend puts down his sketchbook in Forrester's design office to consider why Luna would be unhappy. Carter enters and remarks that since he can't stop thinking about Luna, he must find it difficult to work. He assures him that everything was botched up and that he is a wonderful man. Carter points out that Zend knew he was in bed with his cousin's girlfriend, despite Zend's claims that everything was an error. Zend wants him to keep it from Ridge because he's worried about Ridge's reaction. 
According to Carter, Ridge is the least of his concerns. Man, you betrayed your family. Furthermore, you're obsessed with her. Your face is covered with it. Zend admits that he is smitten with Luna. He feels bad about how he behaved when she arrived at his house, but he mistakenly believed that she desired him just as much as he did. I didn't even think about RJ. That was incorrect, but at that time, Luna was his only thought. I can't concentrate, I can't work, all I can think about is that night, he sobs. That wasn't supposed to happen. However, he is also unable to stop thinking about it. He believed it to be true. Carter is amazed that Luna actually believed he was RJ. After feeling so connected to her, Zend remembers being quite angry the following morning. She is extremely guilty, they both agree that it's her mother's mints, not her fault. Carter finds out that she told RJ the truth. Did he comprehend? Zend queries, may I? Who knows what RJ will do at this point. Luna brings in a box in the main office and hears the door behind her. Though she turns to see it's RJ, it's actually rich. RJ turns Luna down when she tries to leave. You are missed. If he doesn't mean to say it, Luna assures him he doesn't have to. RJ is one of them. I detest being apart. I'd like to give you a call to see how you're doing. I can't stop feeling the need to talk to someone about this, and that someone is only you. He bemoans the awkwardness of it now. This is not who we are. Luna is unsure on how to handle the situation. And I don't either, RJ moans. Luna must be aware of the current situation separating them. RJ informs Luna that he is now more puzzled and wounded than when she initially told him. Whenever he recalls it, he envisions her lying on Zen's bed. Nobody can hold her accountable for anything, it's not her fault. Don't do it yourself either. What if you can't get past it, sniffs Luna. RJ desires to. He longs for their return to life. I know what happened, says Steffi, disregarding Deacon's opinion at the Cliff home. As Finn mentioned, Hope believes he is having difficulty accepting Sheila's departure. Steffi says he has to realize that she is no longer with him. Sheila is not a threat to us anymore. As Finn is leaving the building, he receives a text message from Deacon inviting him to the restaurant. As soon as possible. Immediate Hope and Steffi take a seat at the table to work. Deacon whispers to Finn at Il Giardino, your mother might still be alive. Hope and Steffi talk about the change in the line since Thomas left from the cliff home. Douglas and Steffi, according to Steffi, are doing well abroad. I've heard, Hope snips. She claims that it hasn't been easy. I'm missing them, Steffi replies, me too. Hope is committed to seeing the success of Hope for the future's upcoming line. She doesn't need to pretend to be sympathetic as she knows Steffi intended her to be away from Thomas. Just express gratitude for all of your blessings. Now that Sheila has passed away, you are married to a wonderful father and husband. Steffi is aware of her blessing in having Finn in her life. He no longer has the connection he once did with Sheila. She doesn't know how much more a Sheila their marriage can withstand, so she's glad she won't ever be a part of it. When Finn gets to the restaurant, Deacon suggests that he might want to take a seat for this. Finn assumes this has something to do with Sheila, so he doesn't want to hear it. Telling him he's got it figured out, Deacon is now more certain than ever that Sheila is still alive. Finn appears irritated. Carter is informed by Zend in the design office that Luna is hoping RJ would pardon her. He believes it would be foolish of his cousin to not do so. Luna tells RJ at the main office that she misses their beach time and their jokes at work. She wants to know what she can do to make things right and apologizes for hurting him. I want you to know how much I cherish you forever. RJ won't ever forget. Luna, I adore you too. My love for you will never fade. Luna leaps into his arms, and the two of them scream and cuddle. Finn snaps at Deacon in Il Giardino, telling him that Sheila has passed away. After stabbing her, Steffi saw her face. You observed her countenance. This is not good for you. Deacon yells that they must locate her because she is out there. Finn is done listening. You must give this up. Deacon, you need help. 
He needs to assist Deacon. You must assist your mother. Finn claims that his biological mother has left and won't be returning. He wants to know nothing more about what he believes he witnessed at the crematorium or about Ten Toes. I'm through. Deacon begs, that's not the point, okay? I have some good news to report. Your mother had an accomplice, a pal. Sweetheart. Finn is unaware of that person. Deacon didn't know either, but when a visitor from his mother's Genoa city past showed up, he asked her about it. Finn scowls, who asked about it? Lauren Fenmore, Deacon remarks. Until she brought up sugar, she too believed he was crazy. Friend, get over your fear, this is real. He was surprised as to how he saw Sheila's ten toes and face. Because, as Finn laments, you didn't. That's correct, Deacon says, he didn't. Because Sheila's face wasn't on it. Lauren assembled it for me. Sugar and Sheila are the same person. Sheila was in league with the plastic surgeon and persuaded Sugar to get the procedure. Sheila's face was on her after he was done with Sugar. Same. Finn remarks to Deacon, this is crazy. Deacon yells, are you not getting it? There is a person with ten toes who resembles Sheila perfectly. Finn grumbles, you think. Yes, Deacon exclaims. Sugar was in the crematorium, I believe. Not Sheila. Man, don't you understand what that means? Your mother is still living. Sheila is still alive and well and is out there. On the bold and the beautiful, next up, after Deacon fits the puzzle together and tells Finn a wild tale, Steffi and Hope come together to support Deacon and Sheila. Ridge also breaks some good news to Brooke, who then breaks some awful news to Finn. Please subscribe our channel.